Welcome to Talking Heads on USA Global TV, starring the one and only wonderful Dr. Jacqueline. It's a prestigious place where world-class influencers and experts meet, and where you'll find the most trusted advisors and coaches for all things in life and business. Visit usaglobaltv.com to sign up for our newsletter, get the value you need, and be first in line to learn about events and giveaways and other valuable content. Connect with us. Email Dr. Jacqueline at usaglobaltv.com to talk about how you can become part of USA Global TV. That's USA Global TV, where the doctor is always in. Hello, everyone, and welcome back. It's so nice to have you here at USA Global TV and Business Talk Radio. I am Dr. Jacqueline Kerbeck, and our show today is Talking Heads. If you're joining us for the first time, welcome and thank you. What is Talking Heads? Talking Heads is a platform for people from across the world to come and share their expertise. These are people who have significant experience in their industry and credibility and follow and they come here for their own TV show, which is 30 minutes long, to help make us better personally and or professionally. Our talking head expert today is Mr. Red O'Loughlin. Let's welcome him to the show. Hi, Red. Hi, Dr. Jacqueline. Good to see you again. Nice to see you as well. And you're starting on your second set of six, and I know you have a new topic for our audience today. I'm very excited. I'll be backstage, and I'm going to turn the show over to you. Thank you so very much, Doctor. Appreciate it greatly. We spent the first uh, six sections on age-related diseases, concentrating on Alzheimer's causes and options. Now we're going in a totally different world. Uh, I have written about 40-some articles on Alzheimer's out of 1,500 blogs I've written over time, and I'm putting all those into a book. And so, you know, I publish books for people. I write a lot. I've written several books. I've helped people, even helping Dr. Jacqueline right now with her book. Why not spend a little bit of time talking about writing a book and publishing it? But let's do it from a unique perspective. Let's talk about writing and publishing your book for free. Yes, no money out of your pocket at all. Your time, yes. Your energy, yes. But no dollars out of your pocket. So that's going to be our full concentration for right now. And with that, I have a short slideshow, just a few slides. And I'm going to start with why do people write books? And there's at least a dozen reasons. I'm going to go over quite a few of them here. But a lot of people, and they're not always the same. And maybe sometimes it's multiple reasons. Uh, obviously, one of them, they want to be famous. They wrote a book. And I have a couple of clients of mine. That's all they wanted to do. They didn't want to market the book. They just wanted to be known as a publisher, as a an author of a published book. And that way, when they were speaking, they could sell their book at the back of the room. But that's all they wanted to do, just that they didn't have any interest in making a lot of money off of it or anything else. They just wanted to be a published author. Make money. Well, I think most authors, I can't think of too many that don't want to make money. You say, OK, I'm going to write a book. I'm going to get a lot of money. Uh, you're not going to get those million dollar contracts. You're probably not never going to sell a million books. I think the number of books a new author does when you look at the vast majority of books that are done on a regular basis, they're in the hundreds, not the thousands. And for some people, they never even make it to 100. So if making money is your real goal, your expectations should be set very low. When expectations are high and they're not met, you become unhappy. When you exceed your expectations, your happiness level goes very, very high. So from a money making perspective, yes, it may come down the road, but there's a lot more things that need to be done. Uh, some people just want to brag. Yeah, I wrote a book. Uh, and maybe that bragging is a way of getting back at an earlier life. You know, maybe they had a bad time going through high school or, or college or who knows what, military, uh, some doesn't matter. Then all of a sudden, well, I wrote a book. And then they have that that bragging rights that uh, well, many people don't have. 80% of Americans at one point in time in their life says, you know, I'd really like to write a book about that. Or somebody tells them, hey, you ought to write a book about that. But Less than 2% actually do. Some books are written to share knowledge and experiences. I do this all the time. I, I write on health and wellness. I, I share my personal experiences as much as I can in there because I think uh, they, they are valuable because it happened to me and I can tell you a lot more about it. But stories sell, just data does not. So if you just have a black book and that's all it is, just a, a bunch of words, 
you need to have stories interwoven in there. And whether they're your stories or someone else's stories, it matters not. But the stories are what sells. Uh, if you're a public speaker, I strongly recommend that you have a published book. Why? Because it increases your credibility. You get up there to speak and let's say you're talking, let's say you're a dog groomer. You that's That's what you do for a living. You do it all the time. But you get up there and you talk about it. You're at the Rotary Club, you're a Chamber of Commerce, whatever. But without having a book, you're just another person who has takes care of dogs and grooms them and walks them and everything else. But if you had, let's say, an ebook on 10 ways to improve the quality of your dog's uh, coat or, you know, five foods you should never feed a dog. I mean, just you don't have to have a 150 page book. All you had to do is have something out there, whether it's an ebook, a paperback, or whatever, that you can, in fact, share that knowledge, share your experiences with. You know, there's audio books out there. There's hardcover books. Uh, I have a client right now. We're just in the process of doing a spiral bound book. There's a lot of different kinds of books, and you don't have to have every single one of them, and they don't have to be in every single place things are published. When you get outside of the Amazon world, now you're going to start talking about a little bit of money to get things. Increase crowd. Okay, we just did it. Sometimes you write a book to influence others. Maybe you're very well known in uh, a particular area and you want to be thought of as the thought leader for that particular. So you write a book on that. Uh, it's it happens all the time. You you have this this craving to be recognized and that that recognition means that you have influence over other people. Well, it's kind of a subset of another one, subset of a bragging, maybe subset of increasing credibility. But some people only write books to influence others. And when you start getting into that multi-million dollar range and you start getting older, you know, maybe you want to tell people a little bit about that. The next slide talks about leaving a legacy. A lot of people that get older says, you know, I've been through a lot. And they say, I ought to write a legacy, you know, memoir, whatever you want to call it. And I just finished uh, publishing a book for a friend's father of mine. He had a six-month honeymoon back in 1964. He went to 16 countries in Europe and North Africa. And he told a very amazing story. It's about 800 pages worth. However, nobody's going to buy a six-month honeymoon book 800 pages long. But they, we got it down under 500 pages. We got over 100 photos in there. And he told stories of everywhere he went, and they are just jock full of, of stories. So when you're telling a, a legacy, you know, I went, you know, I was oldest of whatever. Uh, we went here, we lived here. Or, tell a story that's in the middle of all that. I love to tell a story about uh, later on in these presentations, I'm going to talk about interview style of writing. And one of the questions I ask people when I'm talking to them about writing is, tell me about your first car. And people can do that without even thinking. And that is a way of writing a book, and we'll cover that down the road. But I was driving the car over this high bridge in Corpus Christi back when probably late teenage years. And all of a sudden, my left rear tire came off and passed me going down the down the, the bridge. I continued down on three wheels and a brake drum. I found my tire. I managed to jack the car up and get that tire back on. But those little stories, whatever they might be, they may only be five or six sentences, or they may be a couple paragraphs. But the stories are what keep people into your book. So a legacy stories. And if you look down the slide, you'll see tell a story. So we'll get there in a second. Some people, I call it a core dump. And this is a, a term that was used uh, when I was working on a doctorate way back when, uh, financial, uh, fi international finance. And the first test we ever had, see, I'm telling a story. The first test we ever had, he says, I do not want core dumps. And uh, sure enough, I wrote my answer out. And when I get it back, he says, you're skirting right on the edge of a core dump. He, says, he wants the facts. He doesn't want a lot of fill. But some people late in life, they want to tell everybody. They want to tell them their regrets they had, what successes they had, the hidden things that nobody, you know, mommy dearest kind of stuff, things that nobody ever knew about them that now it doesn't matter whether they know or not. And so they just kind of empty themselves out into a book. And that's a reason for doing things. Positioning, what SME, subject matter expert, sort of like the one we had where we're talking about influencing people, uh, sort of about having credibility. But in this particular case, a subject matter expert is something that you're positioning for something else down the road. 
uh, you're at a company, you, you give these same talks all the time on, let's say, budgeting to, to new supervisors or whatever. Maybe writing your own budgeting book as a subject matter expert on budgeting now gives you a position to qualify for something else in that company or to move to another company. So positioning is a, a, a way, it's, it's a narrower way of looking at it. But if you're a subject matter expert in something, positioning may be the, 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 the impetus that gets you going down the road. And all of these things, it doesn't matter what the reason is. If you don't have passion for what you're doing, it's not going to happen. You know, I, I have people tell me, I said, you know, I got three books I want to write. And which one do you have a passion for? Okay, write that one first. Okay, I get 12 chapters in this book. Which chapter do you have a passion for first? Because it may not be the one back when you were being raised by your parents or the one in college. Take the one, because once you get started, then the rest of it follows. It's that first incremental step that you take that's the hardest. Telling a story. Here's where we start getting into a lot of the novels and romance and sci-fi and all sorts of stuff out there. The story can be something about you. It can be something fictitious. There are so many stories out there, lots of them out there, but that's why some people write is to tell a story. You have this thing in your mind. Uh, I belong to a couple different mastermind groups and we talk about, uh, we've had six weeks of training here lately on how to write better fiction. And we talk about the characters and development and location and time and all sorts of things. There are so many things that go into telling a story. It's not just, uh, did you hear about whatever, uh, there's, there's things that if you're going to tell a story, yeah, here's the, here's the frame, but maybe, maybe it's something that, that there was a scent in the air, some aroma, something caught your attention. You know, maybe that's the way that particular people can identify with that. You know, there was, a, there, you know, there was, somebody had an orange. I, I could tell, I could smell it. There are a lot of different ways of telling a story. And when you read these uh, murder mysteries or science fiction, whatever, there are ways that they tell their stories, There's certain ways genres unravel. And sometimes it unravels by them telling you in a narrative, or sometimes it unravels by what they're seeing or what they're feeling or what's actually happening to them. You know, I walked in and I ordered a beer. Well, that sort of tells you you're in a bar. So telling a story, that's probably one of the most difficult ones. You can tell the story, yes, but to tell a story in such a way that you really attract a lot of people to buy your book, that one may come down the road, but it may also be you have such a knack at doing it that that is your, your forte. So sales tools and training. Uh, I mentioned budgeting a minute ago. There are so many different sales tools out there training, whether the training is in uh, first aid or an SEO for computer uh, websites, lots of reasons. And that may be one of the easiest ones to write because all you do is record what you do. You see so many of these YouTube videos telling you how do you how do you share uh, screens on StreamYard? There's videos for that. Well, maybe you want to have a little book. I have a good friend of mine, very good friend. He has a book that's basically the size of a uh, CD case, about four and a half by four and a half inches. It has 60 pages in it, and I think the title is 52 Ways to Improve Your SEO. Uh, he gives it away as a business card, but he makes... Probably in the last, last, I think the last time I talked to him, he had made over $800,000 in the last four years giving the book away. Of course, his clients are very big clients, the Shells and Conicos and Texacos and whatever else is out there. He has very large clients, but he works on their SEOs and he makes a lot of money. But he uses that, that card, that book as his business card. And in there, it tells them what they need to do. Uh, we should never be afraid to tell somebody how to do something. I'm telling you how to write and, and publish your book for free. I'm an author, I'm a writer, I'm a speaker, and I publish books. That's what I do for a living. I have no problem telling somebody how to do it for free. Uh, I'll, I'll tell you as much as you need to know. And in this next six weeks, we're going to learn a lot about that. So it's not something you need to keep a secret. They're going to find out anyway. They're going to find out on, on Google. They're going to find out from some other book. You know, those are things there. Maybe you just want to tell the truth. You know, uh, I had a client a couple of years ago. He had been in the Vietnam-Cambodia border back in April of 69. There was a friendly fire accident. It was covered up. Uh, half the people he was with was were lost. Uh, he lost a lot of his jaw and spent months in, in rehab. And then when he finally started unraveling things, nobody knew anything about it. And 
It took him about 10 years of being pissed off at that. He says, I'm going to write about it. And he wrote it. It took about 10 years to write it. And he spent literally another 10 years trying to get it published. Uh, he didn't know what to do. But he had the book. It was there. It was done. It had been approved by so many people. There was very little, hardly anything needed to be done from an editing perspective. Anyway, I bumped into him. We chatted about it. I took it on two weeks later. He actually had the book physically in his hands because it was that complete. All it needed to be was what size you want the book and what are the covers. We found a cover for free and we did the book uh, and boom, the book was there as 400 and some pages. And it was about that experience that he had in Vietnam, losing the people and then the cover up. So sometimes you want to tell the truth. And sometimes people don't want to hear the truth. So you got to be careful sometimes, especially here in, in our age of the pandemic. There's so much disinformation out there, even though it may be the truth. It's disinformation because it's not following the narrative that everybody wants you to hear. Regardless, if you want to tell the truth, that's a good reason to write a book. And sometimes people just accept the challenge. Uh, and people have a lot of ego and things like that. And it's just, uh, I bet you can't write a book about that. And depending on how it's phrased, how it, you know, maybe there's a, a monetary amount in there. Uh, there's a lot of reasons, but that's another. And I, there's probably another three or four or half a dozen reasons why I don't have a reason for writing. But, but these are reasons people write books. And so you take those reasons and where is your passion now? What do you want to share? What value are you giving to your audience? And if we jump to the next slide here. Next slide talks about what do we need to do in the middle of starting before anything actually touches paper? Who is your audience? Uh, I'm talking with a lady right now. Her audience are people over 50 who have had similar kinds of problems in their life. That's her audience. That's who she wants to communicate with. Well, how are they going to find your book? Well, uh, if she talks a lot of different church groups, then maybe she all her books are going to be on the back of her car. But if you don't know who your audience is, how are you going to even start? I mean, you can write the book. Now I have a book. I'm a published author. But is that really what you want? You actually want to get some monetary return for this, some recognition, uh, some adulation, some credibility. So know who your audience is going in. How do you get to them? How are they going to find you? Well, you have a title. And by the way, titles cannot be copyrighted. So you see a book in the field that you like. Maybe what you need to do is steal shamelessly that title because it cannot be copyrighted. And then you have a subtitle that has all the keywords that when people are typing something into Google trying to find something, maybe they accidentally happen upon three or four of the keywords you have in your subtitle. But that's one way they're going to find you. If you're recognized in the field and you have an email list and other things, is that what you're going to use to, to put that out there? So you still have to think at the beginning, how are you going to market this book? When you start the book down this path, writing, you need to start to put at the same time marketing. Those two need to be parallel. Otherwise, you're going to have your book done. And, okay, now what do I need to do to market? And you've wasted months of time that could have been out there on social media, on emails, on speaking engagements, on lots of things. Uh, if you notice Dr. Jacqueline, when she has a lot of her shows, she brings up her book, Audacity, uh, awesome to, uh, Audacity to Awesome. That's her next book coming out in April. And she's let, getting people out there to let her know it's there. It's available for pre-sale. So there's a lot of things you can do there to let people know how to find your book. Then you need to know who is your competition. Do you have to? No, you can write your book. But we're going to jump over, not now, but a little just toward the end of the show. We're going to go jump into Amazon. I'm going to show you a few little things that... A lot of people, even authors, don't know how to how to find. Uh, and then if you're going to write a book, let's say you're going to write um, a murder mystery. You probably ought to read a bunch of murder mystery books so you know how that genre evolves, what takes place, how do they introduce characters, how do they hook you from one chapter to the next. Uh, be a real avid reader in the field that you're going to be in. Um, I had a mentor um, a long time ago. And he says, you read three books, you're a subject matter expert. You read five books, you have enough information to write a book. So as you're gleaning this information out, even if it's just pleasure reading the newspaper, look at how sentences are put together. Look at how things are introduced. Go back and reread something. Uh, I'll be reading something, and if it really appeals, I'll go back and reread it again. Just because I look at the sentence structure. I look at things that they're not going to help me in my nonfiction writing when I'm reading a fiction book. But the same things apply. 
So if you're not reading now and you want to be a writer, you probably ought to adapt a hobbit habit of reading because that's going to be really critical for what you're going to be going down the road. Uh, a lot of times people have, I'm going to put all this in one book. Uh, I had a guy come to me, we should look at this stuff and he really had seven books. So rather than one book at 500 pages, maybe you have seven books with 90 to 110 pages each. You need 104 pages in a book, generally speaking, to have your name on the spine on the back of the book, the name of the name of the book and your author's name. So if you have something less than 100 pages, it's going to be almost like a paperback uh, brochure more so than a book or the book is going to be bound in such a way they can't print on it. Or if they did, you couldn't read it. OK, we talked about doing this thing. Uh, OK, I'm jumping ahead. How many books have you read in your plan? We just talked about that. How much time do you have? I said we we're going to do this for free, but free doesn't mean free in the context of your time. Free in our context for this session is going to be no money out of your pocket. That's what we're trying to eliminate. You're not going to pull a dollar bill out of your pocket and spend it on anything. However, you can go to the library and read books. Uh, you can pick up books online. There's just so many of them available. There's free books all over the place. They're available. But what about your time? That's a big deal. Anybody's time has to be worth something. So are you going to write, you know, 15, 20 minutes tonight, an hour and a half tomorrow night, and then not do anything for two weeks? If you're going to be a writer, write. If you're going to be an author, different world. Writers write. Authors, it's almost a an occupation. So you need to dedicate the time to what you're doing. So if you don't have that right now, then what I do is I suggest start by noting things. I go back to the example of tell me about your car. If you do an interview style book, then you have a bunch of questions if somebody were interviewing you. So do the same thing. You know you want to write, let's say you're writing a legacy. Okay, I want to write about my uh, childhood. I want to talk about moving around different schools. Well, just put schools. And then every time you think about something, just put a little dot under that little, uh, and then you're, you're keeping track of what's going on. Well, I went to third grade here, and I was a gate guard, and this happened, um, whatever. Or I was in sixth grade over here, and what... Uh, doesn't matter what it is. It's something important to you. It may be a story that you want to tell, but start keeping those little vignettes, those little testimonies, those, those little stories. But with each one, now you have something and maybe it's two books instead of one. Maybe you have a book on your military career and you have a book on your civilian career. It doesn't matter because it's your book, your intellectual property. Do you have the place and the equipment? For most of us, we have a laptop or access to one. They're at the library. So if you need to take an hour a day and go to the library and write your book there, that's available. It's generally quiet. If you have a laptop and you have a quiet room in your house, yes, you need quiet. You need to be away from TVs, kids, spouses, friends. If you're going to be an author, you know, plan it out. Have the equipment, have the place, have the time. Those are things that you control. Now, if you don't have that right now, but you're going to have it in three months, Keep notes on everything because that's going to make it easier later on. You can do editors a number of ways. There's a lot of different uh, social media sites that you can do beta readers. In other words, they'll read it and tell you what's wrong with it. Uh, there's many different kinds of editors, but we're keeping this on the free side. We don't want to have a developmental editor tell us, well, you know, you should develop this character or this, this plot scene really needs... You know, that's fine if you're writing a book and you really need a lot of help with that, those kinds of things. But for most of us, all we want is what they call a copy editor or a line editor. This is a person that looks at your spelling, your punctuation, your grammar, those kinds of things that are in your book. Easy to fix. Well, you know something? Uh, Microsoft Word has its own spell checker. Google Docs has an even better spell checker. You get into Google Docs, the things that Microsoft Word didn't catch, Google Docs will catch it. So that's even a better one. Uh, Grammarly has a free uh, one, a free spell checker and grammar checker, and it's going to tell you a lot of things. Now, if you're going to be serious about it, you may want to spend, you know, 70, 100 bucks on an editing software. But if this is your first book and this is the only one you're going to write, let's keep it free. Uh, so get anything you can for free and use that. Uh, I have parties in my house prior to COVID where I bring people over and I'd have wine and cheese or desserts or whatever, and I'd have... 30 minutes of social intercourse, and then everybody would find a place for an hour in a different spot. 
and I give them clipboards and, and and random chapters of my book and red pens. And I say, just go crazy. I write on health and wellness. I need to know if it, if it makes sense to you. If it doesn't make sense, circle it. If you don't know a word, circle it. That way it's telling me from a set of eyes, you know, a dozen or two dozen sets of eyes over a couple of days. I get a feedback instantly from a, a an audience of readers, not an audience of other authors. They aren't going to help you. They may be able to give you advice, but they're not worthwhile as far as being a reading critique. Uh, editors who are professional do a very good job. But you just want somebody out there to either proofread the book or just say, hey, did you know she had this misspelled? Um, one person pointed out to me, he says, you use if a lot. Maybe you should consider using when. And I said, OK. So I went in there and I clicked find if. Ah, 103 ifs. I went through each one of them and I think I changed 80 percent of them to when. Because it's a stronger way when you do this instead of if you do that. So people can give you some valuable input. Listen to them. Formatting, YouTube, uh, publishing, YouTube, marketing, YouTube. A lot of ways of going there. And we'll jump to the next slide. And we're going to go into Amazon in just a very brief moment. And we're going to look at three different ways of doing a quick look at our competitors. We're going to look at what is your topic about? We're talking about writing books. Why don't we just jump there? Because there's a lot of information there. And then we're going to do one on subject matter expert as if we were looking at SEO. And then we'll take a quick look at legacy. So let's go over to Amazon. And I need to be able to access that. So I need to, how do I make this bigger? Okay. And I want to get up here where I go. I am not able to access. Dr. Jacqueline, why am I not able to access the screen? Hello, everyone. Red, all you have to do is go up to the top of your uh, of your screen where you have ah, Amazon pulled up. Ah, and the old Chrome tab that you told me yes. about. That you know, my thirty second training didn't last very long. <laughs> okay, I have to be retrained. Thank you, Doctor. Okay, getting back here. So I'm in Amazon. And I want to do something. I want to go into Amazon and I want to look for some different characters. So I come over here to all and I go down. And I want to go to books and we're going to type in there, write a book. Oops, I'm on a different computer than I normally use. And it's much higher, but we're going to work with it anyway. Write a book. OK, so I'm going to use that one. And wait you can see what pops up and I'll show you a few things about it. Okay, so writing a book, oh, the power of the publish. Let's just jump at that one. I have no idea what it is, but let's just look at it. So you click on it. What can you find out? Well, obviously, it's Kindle, hardcover, paperback. Okay, not a problem with that. Here's the description. Read more. Here's a bigger description. When you're writing your book, you're going to have a very small description on the back of the book, but this is what is somebody else in your field published uh, go there and you know, this is power in a book hey great sentence this is power in a book maybe you need to adopt that uh, this is unique power in a book this is a powerful I mean, a lot of things so anyway let's come on down the page a little bit i see it's 182 pages in english it was published in may of 19 so it's a pretty new book so i keep on coming down the page and i want to look at the details okay here is where something okay Interview from the Edward O'Keefe coming on down a little bit further. Product details. This is this is worth so much value. Okay, it tells you the, the a lot of things, but 182 pages, six by nine inches. That's nice. And I come down here and it says in entrepreneurial books, it's number five thousand five hundred and seventy nine. Okay, well that's interesting. Uh, Thirty one ratings. Okay, that's good. Almost five stars. That's pretty good. But what about these, What? who's number one in entrepreneurial books? Well, if I was really interested in entrepreneurial books, I would click on that just like I just did. Here are the top 50 books with their covers on entrepreneurship. If I was looking at marketing, I can just click over there and it's going to bring me up the best sellers in marketing, building a brand story, Donald Miller, great book. So these tell you many, many things. If you look at the top, 10, 12, 15 books, I look and see, what do the covers look like? What colors are there? Is it more text or is it people's pictures? Is the author's photo on the, on the cover? What am I looking at? 
because if these are the top books, these are the top 10 books in that marketing field. There's finally one. Uh, he's a great, <laughs> wonderful author. Uh, learned so much from him, both in the real world and in the other. These are things that you can. So make your book cover like these. I'm going to jump back over here and show a couple more things real quickly. And there's the entrepreneurship. Let's get back here because we're running out of time. And I want to come back down to when they have. Okay, I got to get down to the bottom. These things right here, reviews that mention. Everett O'Keefe, write a book, thinking about writing, authoring a book, want to write, great read, writing. These are keywords. When you publish your book, you're going to want to be in a category and you want to have keywords. Look at people who have lots and lots and lots of reviews because Amazon is going to sort out the keywords. And so if you have a book, read this book. That may be a keyword. Read this book to learn about whatever. That's a keyword. And those are critical and they're available all throughout here. Just so much information available there. I want to jump over now to the, um, let's go back to oh, books. And I'm going to do a subject matter expert. Okay, there's books. And we're going to do SEO. So I do S E SEO book is what I want. Let's just see what's there in SEO book. Okay. HFT for beginners. Okay. Three months to number one. Let's just jump on that one and take a look at it. This one I'm not familiar with. And Kindle is available. 20 bucks there. And let's see what the description looks like. Okay. Is this you? Or is it, so bullets in your description. You may not be able to put on the back of your book, but you can certainly put it in. More bullets. Very well written on the description. These are what people search for before they actually buy your book. Uh, you'll discover more bullets. Lots of things there. 249 pages, September 17. So maybe SEO has changed and it has since September 17. But here's our product details. Uh, 249 pages. It doesn't always give you the size of the book. Uh, but we have search engines, online internet searching, search engine optimization. He's number nine. So let's go over to search engine optimization. Click on that one. And here are the top. That's the new, that's the number one book. Uh, okay, we have a copy of a guy's face here. Text, image, text, picture, image, image, picture. So these are the top, that's the top 10 books in social media marketing, online marketing. Those are what you should be paying attention to. So let's jump back over into where we were with the product details. It doesn't tell us here what the size of the book is. But one thing we do have, they have this little thing here called Look Inside. So you click on that. And you can actually take a look at about the first you know, 30 to 50 pages of the, the book. And there we go. It's starting to move slowly. And this is the actual book as you're looking at it. And so you come down. Copyright page liability just disclaimer okay here's where i want you to see here's what's in the table of contents what what's in their table of contents that's not in your table of contents what's in their table of contents that should be in your table of contents what do you have in your table of contents that's not in theirs because that's what separates you from the value you're adding to other people and that's what you need to have so those are very critical that you know what's in other people's books and this is a super simple way of getting there so if I come on back down and I look here at the reviews, get to reviews. Okay. Thousand reviews. And again, here are your great book, easy to understand, well-written writing style, search engine, video series, video tutorials. These are things. Now, when you're looking at, uh, a little, I'm not going to go into that right now. I'll go down the road. But anyway, these are things that you're going to find super fascinating if you're going to beginning to write your book because there's so much stuff here that will just trigger the mind on why didn't I think of that? So we're going to do the last one here real quick and call it 
a day. So let me get up here to get to legacy. So I want to do legacy. And I want legacy book. And again, okay, let's just click on that one. First one we come to, $3.99 on Kindle, 10, 11 bucks on a paperback. And 255 pages. Doesn't really tell me the size there, but that's fine. So I come down. There's editorial reviews. Let's take a fast look at the description because that's what we do. Okay, so I'm going to look at this one. And this one doesn't have bullets. Nice, short, sweet. That's what it is. Come on down. Product details. Again, there's the 255 pages, but it's not telling me in 2013. It's not telling me the size of the book. But it's number one, number three in rugby in both books and Kindle and sports psychology. So if you're legacy, let's say you're in sports, maybe sports psychology is a book that you need to get or look at. So let's go find out who's number one in sports psychology. Well, David Epstein, Range, uh, Think Like a Warrior. The Confident Mind, Endure, Mental Toughness for Young Athletes, Peak. These are the covers that you need to pay attention to. Look at each one of these. What is? Let, let's take a look at this one. What is? What other categories is he in? Uh, that may be something because you're going to be. These are your competitors. You have to either pick the same category they're in or something else. He's in sports psychology, sports training, and sports. Sci, uh, I guess two different ones: books and Kindle store. So these things here tell you, you click on any one of these and they'll go right there. Sports training, training. Let's just go Kindle. What's, what's the number one ebook? Science of strength and training. That's the one. So if that's what you're writing on, you really ought to be aware of that. So right now, I think we've covered most of what I wanted to cover today. So I'm going to jump back to Dr. Jacqueline. Hello. And Dr. Jacqueline, I think for today on number one lesson, before we ever put pen to paper, fingers to keyboard, uh, I think we're just going to conclude there because we've t talked about why people want to write, what things they should consider, and a lot of information that they can glean without even opening what, things that they would never know. And it's so easy to find. And it's free. And the word free is very attractive. <laughs> <laughs> In many, many, many ways. Absolutely. A fantastic show. I really love the the use of the slides and also by uh, being able to take people right over to Amazon. I think that's really helpful. How did you feel about it? Uh, it's the first time I've done this on StreamYard. I do it all the time on Zoom, but every new technology, you got to learn the little ins and outs. And I appreciate you rescuing me there when I was floundering. But anyway, it worked <laughs> out well. Uh, I, I hope it didn't distract too many people. But anyway, those are the things and the recordings there. You can always go back and Go back and back and forth. And I, maybe I should say, let me click here right now because i that's probably what I should do when I'm clicking is to tell people I'm actually clicking there because they don't know. All I do is click and work some other page. So that that's a good lesson learned that I learned today Whoops, on that one. So Fantastic. Well, thank you so much, Red. I'm going to spotlight you so you can share with people how they can reach out to you just in case someone's just joining right now. What's the best way to get in touch with you? My website is redolaughlin.com. For those people who are not on video or on the uh, or on a podcast, is just listening. Red, R E D, just like the color. Olaf, O L A U G H L I N. Olaughlin. Red, Olaughlin.com. One one word. Okay. If you have, I have a red dot Olaughlin email address at gmail.com. So it's red dot O L A U G H L I N at gmail.com, and I, email is the absolute best way to reach me, bar none. But if you want to see some of the books that I've published for other people, it's on my website. And please just ask me a question. I'll be more than happy to give you an answer anytime. Fantastic. Thank you so much, Red. I appreciate it. And before you go, I've got an exciting announcement, friends. Talking Heads platform is so well run and so exceptionally uh, delivered the content by our team that we are expanding it to the talking heads panel we will meet the second tuesday of each month and there will be five talking heads and me and the talking <laughs> heads are drum roll please mr red o'laughlin mr al sini mr roland friedel 
Ms. Mariska Dupree and Ms. Diane Floyd Bame. Fantastic. Pretty, group group. Great. Group yes, group. it is. So what you can expect when you join us for the panel is no one will know what the topic is going to be until five minutes before the show. And each of our panelists will have a turn to pick the topic and we will just have a great conversation from there. So I'm looking forward to it. Again, it's the Talking Heads panel, the second Tuesday of every month. And that is going to be at 1 p.m. Pacific Standard Time, 3 p.m. Central Standard Time, 4 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. And by that time, since daylight savings will be in effect, it will be 9 p.m. British Summer Time. Okay. And, Mar and Mariska is coming from New Zealand. New Zealand, thank you. It's 8 a.m. in the morning, New Zealand time. <laughs> Dr. Jacqueline, I'm, I'm disappointed because what? whenever I do a health and wellness topic, you always have questions that you, you know, inquiring minds must know. Uh, so obviously I didn't have an inquiring mind today, but I'm just picking on you. Oh, no, I, I have a lot of questions. Um, I wasn't <laughs> I just thought, okay, yes, I'll ask some questions. So, uh, one of the questions that I had, you wrote about tell the truth. And then you also said, um, I don't know if you actually said these words, but once you put it out there, it's out there forever. So as you know, in my first chapter of this book, Adversity to Awesome, I've written something about something very personal that happened to me. And I had to actually think about it several times because you can't take it back. Yes. So what coaching do you have for people in terms of putting it out there as a cathartic process? Maybe when you're going, let's say you're, you had something traumatic happen to you, you're in therapy, they tell you to write it down or, you know, get it out of your system, so to speak. When should someone put pen to paper or fingers to keypad to put something out there forever and when should they maybe just talk to their therapist or, or write it down and then rip it up writing it down and ripping it up is, is great writing it down mailing it to yourself is great uh, writing it down keeping it in a locked cabinet is great uh, the writing process is very therapeutic uh, the sooner the better uh, we have a chapter in our book about uh, one of the ladies Teuda, i believe if i remember right you know, she had a very traumatic experience and one of the first things out of her brain was i forgive the guy uh, I, I thought that was remarkable yeah and i think it also aids in your mental health it aids in so many deals so that you that burden of blame or whatever else you're carrying can just really take a toll but yeah you're writing it you may not release it to the world in fact in some cases you know if it's you know mommy dearest kind of stuff uh People have been known to sue because of that. Well, that's not true. That's not, well, again, maybe sometimes I have one client, her son would not allow her to have his name in her, in her, in her book. So we, we can mention we have a son, but I couldn't even put his name down because it's going to get a release from him. So if you have people's names in books, you need releases. Uh, if you want to change a name, uh, we talked about this the other day. You know, somebody really irritates you all the time. You know, maybe he want, he needs to be a villain in one of your books or needs to be killed off in the first chapter. There are lots of ways of dealing with with things and names. You got to be really careful with them. But if it's your recollections and you're not naming anything, you know, my teacher in third grade, who knows who your teacher in third grade was? You know, uh, a co-worker. You don't nobody. Know, you know, maybe the people who were with you might be able to figure it out if they read it and were able to actually start talking among themselves. Oh, when did this, I, I don't know. Uh, so there's just so many things out there, but yes, uh, if you're putting it out there, it's out there. People will find it. And the way the computers search nowadays, they search by word. If you, if you're telling about an embezzlement and embezzlement is a word key search, boom, it's going to find it at some point in time. Uh, I had a photo in one of my blogs a year ago, two years ago, Somebody, a lawyer in New York contacted me, says, you're using this photo illegally. They had done a search for the photo. Well, I went back. I found out that, number one, the photo I got from Pixabay was a free, royalty-free photo. I changed the photo immediately because the lawyer said to do it. And, I, and then the lawyer came back and says, you need to give credit to the website. And I said, no, wait, 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 wait. I said, number one, I've already changed the photo since you last saw it, I put another photo in there. But number two, that photo is a royalty-free photo on Pixabay. You really need to talk to them because that's where I got it. So I don't put anything images-wise. If it's 
If it's not something I create, I give credit to whoever it is. If, and I try to find royalty free everything because you don't want to pay for anything. So royalty free on photographs, on images, on it. But there's so much stuff out there. You can't believe the millions of items out there that are available that that can fit in your book without any problem at all. All right. So now I'm going to ask you the hard question. The hard question is uh, you just shared with people how they can publish a book for free. When should they not publish the book for free? Are there, were there any circumstances there? You talked about editors, proof right, readers, et cetera. Yeah. Okay. Uh, I, I have a very good friend of mine who's written his book several years ago. It's about his experience in Vietnam. Uh, he is absolutely wanted. He had, a, he had an agent, because he felt like this book may actually make a movie. Uh, he had an agent, a really good agent, and over a couple, three years, then the agent said, no more. So he went and it took him another year to find somebody to publish. Well, I think Texas Tech University is going to be publishing it in next year or the year after, next year, 2023, or maybe late this year. But sometimes your book, uh, oh, remember the book, The Martian? It was a movie. And it's about the guy who got left on the planet of Mars, of Mars and he grew his own crops. And uh, anyway, that book was rejected by a hundred or so publishers, but it finally came around. Finally, somebody accepted it and he made millions of dollars on the book, millions of dollars on the TV deal. Just because the book is not accepted by a publisher doesn't mean it's not a good book, but sometimes they will offer you. Okay, fine. I will get you this many uh, signing events. Uh, I'll make your website. I'll, I'll, you know, put this much money out for advertising, you know, depending on what the package is, most publishing packages are stiff in the terms of price. Some publishers will keep your intellectual property. Some publishers will own the next book you have coming out because you're under contract to them. Some publishers uh, will even make the decision what your cover is going to look like and what your title is going to look like. So there's a lot of things when you start saying, I'm going to pay somebody to do something read the fine print because it may not always be exactly what you're thinking it may be. There may be a lot of things you have to give up in order to pay them money to do what you have done. And on top of everything, just because you're paying something doesn't mean it's going to happen this year uh, because they're notoriously very, very, very slow. They're going to create your website. They're going to have their editors. They're going to send it back and forth, back and forth, back and forth, back and forth until they're happy with it. Just, it's just a long drawn out process. It's going to be a very good book. Uh, but if you have the money and the inclination and the time, go for it. There's nothing saying you have to do it for free. Absolutely nothing. Thank you for clarifying that. That's brilliant. All right, Mr. Red O'Laughlin, we are going to close out for today. Thank you so much for being here. And again, for people who want to contact you, the best way is email. And that is red at redolaughlin.com. Absolutely. Thank All you, right. Dr. Jacqueline. Thank you. It was great seeing you again. Bye-bye. Bye now. That concludes our programming for today, my friends. We will be back tomorrow. I think we have eight or nine shows. And then we are broadcasting, as you know, every Monday through Friday. If you'd like to watch our shows on a regular basis and you're not sure exactly where to find us, go over to our YouTube channel, which is USA Global TV. Just click subscribe and you'll be made aware of our programming. We have about 20 live shows. Now I just added another one, 21 live shows every week. And there's something for everyone. We're actually planning to add a couple of additional shows as well. You can also watch our shows on our website, which is usaglobaltv.com. If you're interested in becoming a talking head, if you have the credibility, you are an expert presenter and you have a following, please do go ahead and contact me because the talking heads are by invitation only. And you can reach me on my website, which is usaglobaltv.com. Com. Thank you so much for being here. We're going to close out with uh, thoughts and prayers for people of Ukraine. So let's take a look at this and then we'll be back again tomorrow. Thank you so much.